like at the end of the day, like I talked to Tony, did it today, and I said, hey, you know, do you, if you want to come back on the show and kind of just set the record straight and kind of take the high road, and he's like, now nah, I don't know if I want to go back on and in the podcast and do that again. I think maybe I'll do my own kind of video and just post it on my social media and make a, an announcement of, you know, trying to set the record straight and people are misconstruing what I said and taking that out of context. And so I hope well, he does that. I hope he, he makes an announcement on his, his own social. But the thing is, <laughs> that's a good idea. But the reason why I'm, I think he shouldn't just do it on his platform is because the heat and all the attention came from here. Yeah. And made his page private. So that's just for his fans. Yeah. You got to put it back on the platform where you put it out there, you know, because this is a non biased channel. Yeah. And this is a safe place to voice whatever it is you feel. Yeah. So, me personally, I think that what he want to do is just for his fans. Your fans already in your corner. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to say. Good point. Go back to the platform where it's non biased. Yeah. Because this channel had Nick Strength even reposted your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my fucking mind. Yeah. I was like, all oh, the big, mind. all of the YouTubers, all of them, yeah. Ozzy Fitness. Nick Strang, RX Muscle. RX Muscle, buys and tries. I was like, I was, I was like, okay, that's right. Get the get the get the get the attention going the right way and yep. give give the credit to the right channel. Yeah, you know, don't just take a spin off and talk about it on yours and not give the credit to where you got it from. And yeah, and I, I was pushing for him to come back and so just hey man, like speak freely, like let's let's see if we can re repair this, you know, repatch yeah. some of the damage. Beat the other because they respect each other too much. Yes, but what, but what Rafael did, he gave this man so much fire. Yeah, to where that his next competition, he's gonna do them guys so bad, and he's gonna take all the time to focus only on him for that Olympia. Yeah. And that fire is also being fueled, you know, I was talking to Antonio today and he's telling me about like, he had to make his Instagram account private because he's wow. getting trolled. Right. And then he had to make his, his girls, uh, his girlfriend's account private because they're going after yeah. her. And then he had yeah. to make, he had to disable his son's account because they were really going in on the son. They commented like the N word or something. And that really yeah. pissed Tony off. And then it was like, why? His health felt him so bad. He yeah. did things that he regret. What did Milos do to you that you regret? We already know you use insulin. Yeah. A lot of us do. So what did you do? Some what? More diuretics than normal? Like, really? Like, you didn't do anything that you regret. What you did that you re regret, but you too coward to say is you fired your fucking friend that you was calling family yes. through message. That's something you do in high school to a chick. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Muscle Discord. And we have a very special guest back on the Muscle Discord podcast, Mac Truck. Man, welcome back to the show. Man, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Round two, baby. Round two. I mean, the last video we did got you know some good hits on it and got some lots of comments on it. And uh, because we speak our minds. We're both right, both known in the industry. You have your own YouTube channel. I'll put that in the description so people can find you there. Um, you speak it like it is. Right. I think that's yeah. why a lot of people like to follow you and listen to what you got to say, because you're not high. and you're you're well known in the industry. You have a lot of experience in the industry. You work with a lot of the pros in the industry. You got friendships with the pros in the industry. So you got that respect when you open up and speak the truth. So, you know, I put out a video um, the other day uh, interview I did with Tony O'Burton um, and he was all it's uncentered. He really opened up in that uh, video and discussed his, you know, displeasure with his placing at the 2024 Arnold Classic Brazil. And right. that went viral. It, it literally went viral on Instagram and social media. It, it did. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. I think he was expecting that. And um, he got a lot of, you know, clap back from the Brazilian fans. Right. 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 And then 
when I posted the reel on Instagram on the Muscle Discord Instagram page, Raphael responded and we all saw what he said. You know, we can go back and find that that's there. And he he made some digs at Tonio, right. right? And said Tonio was in his gym, training in his underwear, that Tonio clogged up the toilet, uh, a whole bunch of crap that was kind of coming out it of was- Randale's mouth. So I just want your take. So you've seen everything that's happened. You've got you have to watch the videos and see the comments. What's your take on this new rivalry or beef between now Raphael Brandeo and Tony Burton? Um, my take is, see, I personally met Tonio last year at the Cal. And yeah. I could tell you this. Um, dude is humble. He's not stuck up. We in a pump-up room having normal conversation. You see what I'm saying? So he's he's really approachable, respectful. Um, that competition he lost to uh, Ross, which I felt he shouldn't have, but the the guy takes it on the chin. So for me to see him expressing how he felt there, it was uh, it definitely had to be unpleasant for him, you know, because the guy is like I say, he's so easy breezy, and he's gonna give you a shirt off his back. Yeah, you know, I asked him every question I asked him about different things that he's doing, what he eat, and all of this. He answered honestly, so. Yeah. He don't have any hidden agendas or motives. He's not trying to be selfish with the sport. He's actually sharing his information. Not only that, he has a great physique, super conditioned, and he's polished really well. So when he was stating how he felt, me personally going to Brazil, being American, Mm -hmm. I already expect that. So kind of like a gift and a curse to even come in second to someone in Brazil, but if you look at it, it was other Brazil, um, Brazilian uh, athletes in that competition. So if it was going to be really biased, mm. they would have had all their guys place in, in the top five because I think it was like maybe five or yeah. six of the guys. Yeah, you know. So um, I think they just have some personal issue now because nothing. I can't take anything around away from Rafael. Mm-hmm. It's just certain digs that he did wasn't caused for, like with the training in your draws. He doesn't train in his draws. The clogging up the toilet and all of this. How did he clog up the toilet? Like, you know, we're athletes. Yeah. (laughs) You're going to make certain mistakes. That's just something normal. But just to take personal digs and jazz win and then to end it with, you disrespect my country. Mm. Now what you're doing is trying to get your country to attack this guy. Yeah, Like, oh, it's between y'all two. Because normally, it's the judges we're going to have an issue with, not the guy. Yeah. You know, and I personally didn't feel like Rafael was at his best, like when he did the Arnold. Yes. Ohio, his breathing right. was terrible. You know, yeah. he couldn't breathe. So they was giving him special treatments to catch his breath by not letting him get in those call outs. Yeah. You know, but Antonio should not have expected to win that period, even if he looked it better, even if. OK, it's good, so that's because. that's your judgment call and saying, you know what, he's going to Brazil. But OK, let, let me rebut that a little bit, because um, last year, I think was it last year where uh, Tabani, the uh, Iranian beat Rafa. I, don't, I think it was 2022 when he beat Rafa yeah, at that, Arnold Brazil. And yeah, because he didn't compete in 23. He didn't, but he competed in 2022, and Raph was the big right. Brazilian favorite there, and they still allowed, if you want to say it, an Iranian to beat him in his own hometown. So can you say, are they biased? Because they've let, there's been lots of, like, Juan Morel, Brandon Curry, there's a list of people, Americans, that have won the Brazil show against other Brazilian right athletes, and there hasn't been that kind of, like, oh, is there a bias here? Is there favoritism to the Brazilian athlete? Because... If that were the case, those other shows, they would have given it to Rafa over the Iranian. They didn't. Right. Um, I don't think that it was so much favoritism because remember I said there were other Brazilian dudes that should have placed at them too if that was the case. Yeah. So right there, that eliminate that there would be in um, just putting their guys first. Now, it was some special treatments. You know, you got to remember, they guy just took top three. That's at the Arnold. Yeah. So that's a really big deal. 
So with him going there, he already was the fans favorite. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Antonio just only won the New York pro It's beneath not taking any jabs to anyone, but yep. it's not so prestigious over the Arnold Ohio. You see? So, yeah. you know, when you know how I go, if you, have, if you, you're, if you're better than your worst, <laughs> yeah. you're still going to win when you're a fan favorite. Exactly. You know, and I just think it was just on that level, but me going into that competition, I would have already had it in my head. I'm going to battle. I'm not expecting to win because I'm crossing over to another country because a lot of countries does not like the United States. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, so it's kind of like you got to be at your very best. Antonio was his best, but he wasn't his very best. Okay, so you don't think he was improved? So his last show was the New York Pro, and then and then, or no, it was the Arnold, uh, or sorry, the Olympia he did, oh. and then this was his show after that. So his first show since the Olympia six months yeah. later. And right. he's 10 pounds heavier on stage, fuller, bigger. Conditioning to me was, if not better than the Olympia. So you're saying this wasn't his best. The reason is, okay, he was 10 pounds bigger. Yeah. His conditioning was spot on. But yeah. the difference <clears throat> is, Tonio normally have deep lines in those quads and hamstrings. Mm, okay. okay. And his conditioning was, you know, I, like Tonio seeing this man in person, Mm -hmm. It's it's surreal because his back jumps out at you. Yeah, turtle shell his back. Odds yeah. jumps out, and the skin is so tissue paper thin. Yeah. So he adds that, and he had that this last competition. However, the deep lines wasn't in his quads and hamstrings, and I think that was the um, deciding factor. Yeah. And they used that against him. Now, far as condition overall package. Him and Gavito had the best conditioning, period. Yeah. You um, know. I wanted to share my screen here. Okay. Let me just get this set up. There it is. Okay. Let me go back here. Now I had I had some comparisons set up here just so we can really break it down. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So th let's look at the lines in the legs. Okay. This okay. is for prejudging. So this is when Tonio didn't have the oil on properly. Tonio said that they weren't oiling him, him up backstage. They were giving preference to Brad Dale and good video wasn't getting oiled up back too. Yeah. It happens at all shows though. Okay. All right. So let's put that out there. It happens sometimes. Yeah. You can see the quads here. There is some separation in Tonio's quads and you look at Raphael's quads. Like what's your assessment here? He definitely has separation. The sweeps is a whole lot better. The waist is tiny. It, it like in like the abs, even yeah. on a vacuum, you can still see deep cut it abs, but the Antonio quads are a whole lot more dense than what they are right here. Okay. Any time. But this is just a still picture and holding them on stage, it 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 will fade in and out when you're watching the live stream with Tonio. Yes. But right here, this is spot on. Like, if you compare these two poses, Tonio win this all day. Oh, That's what I'm saying. That, okay, so th there you go. And they're saying, no, this is Brandeo's shot. Brandeo is winning the front double bicep. He's running the front poses. But people were watching the live stream. Like like you said, you can't really, you didn't see the cuts. It looked faded a little bit. In the live stream, now when you see the high resolution photos that just these just came out, people don't realize that NPC on News Online put these photos out just recently. No one's really paying attention to them, and here they are. Here's the the high resolution. Like this is what the judges it's, should have seen, and they still gave it to Brandale. Yeah, there's no way that he outdid Tony on this pose. No way, no way. And to be honest, <laughs> there's a weight different. 25 you, pounds such a weight difference in between the two yeah he had about like maybe 30 35 pounds yeah yeah tony was and, 225 brandale's maybe 250 so 25 yeah, 30 ish pounds he's holding it he's he's actually ahead right here you know and, and what's jacked up is the live stream it was um it was not showing this mm -mm. and with seeing this 
Rafael is not conditioned at all no. on this. He looks like he's every bit of two weeks out, to be honest. Exactly. And I'm dog in this fight. I'm just no. being I'm just care. being a spectator yeah. and a fan of the sport. Yep. Taking myself outside of working to become a professional in this sport. Mm -hmm. And he's two weeks out on this. Yep. Tony o right here, like he have every right to be feeling frustrated. And clearly, if we just go off of this pose alone, we don't even have to go to the others. If we go off yep. this pose alone, yep. clearly he's robbed. There he's you go. Robbed. Yeah, I mean, you know, and then the other shot is the side chest. And this is supposed Look. to be his Brandeo's killer shot to take anyone out. And there's a 25, 30 pound difference. I don't see the difference in size. Which is... I don't either. I don't either. Look at the thickness Skin. in Tony's chest. Yes. Now, Rafael have a wider clavicle. Yeah. But the dense muscle maturity is not showing on him. Mm -hmm. Tony has it all. And like I said before, I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, if you go down to the bottom half of the body, yeah. Tony o is as wide, hamstring, quad, side sweep, glutes, denseness as Rafael. And he's 25, 30 pounds bigger than this guy. Yeah. And you and, and clearly he was not conditioned enough. Maybe he should have clogged up the toilet. Maybe he yeah. should have trained in his draws. Yeah. You know, because if if that was his comeback to try to take shots at this physique, Antonio, mm -hmm. it was a weak comeback. Yeah, I mean he's, he 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 made some gift. digs. He's like, yeah, he's, he was he, he got a gift in his home country. Yeah, uh, and, and again, we're not personally attacking Raphael or anyone or the, taking digs at the judges for doing whatever. Judges do what they got to do, whatever. We're just assessing their physiques and. Given our opinion on it here, guys. That's it. Okay. Look at the forearms. Look at both of their forearms. Yeah. I mean, the 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 thickness of the skin. So just look at the, the thickness of the skin and then the, the thinness of the skin here. Like is there's you have to look at those little details, yep. right? Antonio has issue paper. He yes. has thick skin. He has literally dick skin. Pull your penis off, yep. pull the skin. That's how thin Antonio is all over. Like it, it's the soft guy, up here. It's soft yeah, up here. It's, yeah, you can take a nap on it. Pillow yeah. soft. Like, look at the um, the obliques in Antonio. And, it's thin and, here. And I, it's like dry. It's, it's fingers and pumpkins all yeah. through that. Yeah. You it's know. Thin. And if you look at the hamstring, quad tie, oh, see? There you Come go. On now. now you got so, this to work with now. Like, what I mean... That booty have so many golf balls in it. Why are you still shooting at glutes? That was you know, yeah. a week of competition. It's supposed to be up here. You're gonna do the shot. Do it up here. <laughs> you don't do it right in the muscle. Like uh, who go that low? Damn, that's gotta be hurt. That's gotta be painful. What, what are you doing, man? You're a pro. You should know where to do the shots. He should at least just stuck with the lats. Yeah, if you still take shots week of competition because that right there is the deciding factor on why he was a condition that oil sitting in that ass and he couldn't he couldn't pull it off from under oh. the skin okay oh that's a good point yeah it's actually a good point it and does look at, look at tonio's glutes they're that's like this guy is just so his skin is so thin to where that you can just see every veins, fiber. The veins in there. The yeah, fibers. Like, his back is similar to Breon's, Ansley's. And I see Dexter. He looks like Dexter in this. He shaved the head. He looks like oh, Dexter. Yeah, Dex all day. Like, that's how good he is. I mean, Dexter's the Mr. Olympia, Arnold champ. Like, he's got, that's what, and then he's, this is beating Tonio? Nah. Look at the lower back on Rafael. Yeah, there's All folds. That, it's like, yeah. And then it's really, um, you can see the water sitting on the thickness of the rolls on the lower back. Yeah, right, right here, right here. Look yeah. at this. Look at this. There's Phil Heath nothing. had the same thing. There's not, it's like this Fiber. The anatomy of the the muscle. Is, that's all you see. You don't see skin. You can yeah. pinch. I could pinch this right here on Raphael. 
Yeah. But again, the Brazilian fans, they, they, they don't want to look at They don't want to see that. They Oh, he just looks, his shape is so good. He's so good. Yeah. We're going to see at the Olympia, like uh, Rafael said, the Olympia, we'll see. But he got to remember, you're talking to a, a eight-time finisher. He finished eight-place finisher. Exactly. Like, you didn't make top 10 yet. Calm down. Exactly. <laughs> Calm down. You're talking to a 212 that went to the Open and finished top eight. Yeah. Calm down. You know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he's calling him out. Say, we'll see you at the Olympia. Maybe. Right. Like he's digging and yeah. digging. Yeah. Like he was, he got a gift. So now he don't understand how much fuel he just gave Tonio. Mm -hmm. Because the competition between Tonio and Nick is friendly fire. So now one of them really have it in them to pull out everything they have to beat the other because they respect each other's too much. Yes. But what but what Rafael did, he gave this man so much fire. Yeah. To where that his next competition, he's gonna do them guys so bad and he's gonna take all the time to focus only on him for that Olympia. Yeah. And that fire is also being fueled, you know, I was talking to Antonio today and he's telling me about like, he had to make his Instagram account private because he's wow. getting trolled. Right. And then he had to make his, his girls, uh, his girlfriend's account private because they're going after her. And then he had yeah. to make, he had to disable his son's account because they were really going in on the son. They commented like the N word or something. And that really yeah. pissed Tony off. And then it was like, why it's like, this yeah. is, What's your thought? And, you know, people don't like to hear the truth. You know, the truth cut deeper than a lie. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I honestly feel like when Tonio did the podcast, that he was transparent. He had nothing to gain off of it. He was just being brutally honest on yeah. his take, how he's seen it. And for someone to take that and feel like it's time to attack the kids, his woman, his livelihood is just shows how the Brazilian fans are, even if he would have won. It'd have been a hundred times worse. Yeah. Uh that that's what I said in in the show with him. I was like, I mean, and he said the security, like, do you have your security ready? If you win, be ready. That's kind of yeah. scary in a sense. Like I because I don't care how bad a person is, how fearless they are. Numbers will always win. Yeah. And if he would have won, it would have been the peoples that have something to prove that could have potentially hurt him. Yeah. Well, his life was potentially in danger. And to be honest, I wouldn't go back there to compete again if I was him. Yeah. Because especially after this. Yeah. It's the fans now that he has to worry about. Because when Rafael say that you disrespect my country, he he added fuel in that fire to create my country to hate this guy instead of keeping it on the stage. Exactly. He, he don't like, I don't did, did uh, Tony do anything to disrespect the country of Brazil? Not at all. Not at all. And then, so what Raphael's doing is he's inciting that into his fans. If they respect my country and you know, Brazilians, they're very patriotic. They're like yeah. all in on their country. And so if it's football, soccer, yeah. like it's the same thing. You Passion. can't, you can't rile him up. And that's what he did right. with that post. Right. And I've been there before with the family being attacked and all of the hate emails and, um, you know, as far as even children's services being called from yeah. lying and saying I'm beating on my kids and wife and alcoholics, steroids. So I'm like, I've been there. And the one thing I didn't do was make my accounts private. So I think by Tony making his stuff private, he's saving some of the BS. Mm -hmm. But it's still things getting see through. He just gonna have to block out social media, focus on the task in front of him, yeah. put his head down, and just drive through it. You know, drive through the storm because now he has to battle a country when it pertains bodybuilding. Yeah. It's not even about Rafael no more. It's about a country because there was other Brazilians in there that he also kicked their asses. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He and there was some that was competing that looked better than Rafael. 
Now, yeah. has a pleasant physique, you know, nice streamlines, nice taper waist. He has everything going for himself. However, that physique cannot outcondition someone with muscle, shape, and everything that you have to offer. It's yeah. not some win. If that uh, was the case, Samson would have beat Hottie. Exactly. Where's the criteria? Like, where is the criteria going here? Is it condition? Is it just shape? Like, Raphael's nice shape, so we give it to him. But watch here with the arms here. Look at Raphael digging. He's starting the final stage. He's then watch, Kai Green. Yeah. He's Kai Green. And then and Antonio's clapping. Look at that. He pushed him again. He's like, dude, like, yeah. real what? And the judges didn't say, hey, 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 hey. Steve Weinberg would no. be like, hold up a bit, hold up. He would stop it and correct exactly. Brandale. And call him out, but did that didn't happen here? So I don't Look, know. Look, even on the live stream, you can see Tonio killing him. The man, the glutes, the hamstrings, the back. <sighs> Raphael don't even have no no form of a calf muscle. <sighs> period. Again, yeah. we're just critiquing. We're not digging because the fans are going to watch this and going to be like, "Oh, you guys just hate Raphael." No, we don't hate Raphael. We're just cr criticizing the physique. We're critiquing it. That's it. I actually like this man because he took that year off yeah and, came and he killed it on stage yeah you know now he could be and now he has to be a whole lot more bigger but he outdid his last showing in 2022 100 percent. so i commend him for putting his head down driving through the storm and uh focusing on the task at hand and actually coming back a whole lot more improved but in order for him to be tonio he he had to have the same conditioning that he had in Ohio. Yeah. And he had nowhere near that. And look at this. This Tony is the Yoda. final. This is the final. Let me just cue this up. This is the finals. And this is the weird kind of call-outs they did. Right? Like, why is it at that open and shut, you just leave Raphael off to the side and just call these two as assuming they're the, the two second and third? Like, why not bring out Raphael? Like, that, I've never seen this. Yeah, not even an NPC. Like they threw him a life raft because he was out there drowning. He's so breathing heavy. Stage to dry him off, to let him catch his breath, to get back out there. Yeah, you know, because for Tonio to have sweat coming off his forehead, mm -hmm. he was exhausted because I ain't ever see Tonio sweat. Yeah. You know, like, he know how to hold his poses. He know how to breathe. He know how to keep that stomach pulled to the back and everything so they like ran him and Gavito in the ground to yeah. allow Rafael to get some rest and this wasn't this was so disrespectful and unsportsmanlike it was everyone called it out all the like Nick strength and power they're all like what's why I've never seen this before why do this yeah it was just there was no need for it look at that lat spread on Tonya yeah. and Gavito is Wider than him, but Tony served that rear lap spread. Yeah, it's it's okay. unbelievable. The only thing with Tony on this one, like you say, he needed to just twist. He, yeah, that that upper torso, you we know, can, just show yeah. more wideness because Good Vito was so much wider on that side tricep. That's all he yeah. needed to do is twist just a little bit, the the same as he do with his side chest. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, Look man. They, they worked. They worked both of these guys in the ground. They had to come back. They, but where they messed up is the more you make Tony pose, the harder he gets. Yeah. You know, I haven't witnessed him fading. Mm -hmm. Now, watching the screen before you showed the high resolution pictures, yeah. it wasn't showing the deep lines, but Tony lines get even deeper. In those freaking quads and the hamstrings, like the the dude is, he's a machine. Yeah, he's a machine, and everyone need to start paying close attention to him because he's climbing really fast. Definitely, definitely, and um, you know, uh, like at the end of the day, like I talked to Tony did it today, and I said, hey, you know, do you, if you want to come back on the show and kind of just set the record straight and kind of take the high road, and he's like. Now, I don't know if I want to go back on and in the podcast and do that again. I think maybe I'll do my own kind of video and just post it on my social media and make a, an announcement of, you know, trying to set the record straight and people are misconstruing what I said and taking that out of context. And so I hope well, he does that. I hope he, he makes an announcement on his, his own social. But, 
the thing is, <laughs> that's a good idea. But the reason why I'm, I think he shouldn't just do it on his platform is because the heat and all the attention came from here. Yeah. And made his page private. So that's just for his fans. Yeah. You got to put it back on the platform where you put it out there, you know, because this is a non-biased channel. Yeah. And this is a safe place to voice whatever it is you feel. Yeah. So me personally, I think that what he want to do is just for his fans. Your fans already in your corner. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to say. Good point. Go back to the platform where it's non-biased. Yeah. Because this channel had Nick Strength even reposted your channel. Yeah. Oh yeah. my fucking mind. Yeah. It's like all oh, the mom. big, all of the YouTubers, all of them. Yeah. Ozzy Fitness, Nick Strength, Rx Muscle. RX Muscle. Buys and tries. I was like, I was, I was like, okay, that's right. Get the get the get the get the attention going the right way and yep. give give the credit to the right channel. Yeah. You know, don't just take a spin off and talk about it on yours and not give the credit to where you got it from. And yeah, and I, I was pushing for him to come back and so just hey man, like speak freely, like let's let's see if we can re repair this, you know, repatch yeah. some of the damage. And he was a little bit like, ah, I don't know, man, like all this is kind of coming from the show and, and what I said, and people are saying this, and then I'm like, but those are your words. Those are your words. You know, you you had the I just said ask the questions, you answer them uncensored, and you know what, you gotta be either prepared for that. And mm -hmm. when you're that open about it, some bodybuilders are not. They're going to hide away and not talk like that. He's very open. And so is Nick Walker. They're very open. And they yeah. get clapped back a lot, right? Yeah. And now he's experiencing that. And he's kind of like, man, I don't know. Like, I, but So maybe he has a little bit of a, should not I have done that? Off. Not to cut you off, but you know, it would be beautiful if you could referee having both of them on a the channel. Yes. To where they, they can... They, they, but they got to be respectful yeah. and see each other's part because we can stop this from becoming um, a hatred battle to yeah. just a rivalry. Yes. A, a healthy rivalry. You know, uh, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, uh, Kai Green. Well, can't really say Kai Greenfield. He, because they hated each other's, but they still was more respectful than this to the yeah. last, the last leg of it. But it would be so much better if you can like get both of them and you could just be right in the middle of the mediator. Yeah. Give them both the platform to speak their their side and hopefully some common ground could come out of it. Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be awesome to uh be able to do. I did reach out to Brandale, but he hasn't seen the message. So I doubt he would come on. I don't know. Does he speak good English? I haven't seen him speak that much. Dude, yeah. that dude speaks fluent English. He does? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've never seen him do many interviews, so it's like, it's yeah. It's not all broken up. He can speak really good English. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. He all can right. speak really good English. So, and and it'll blow your mind because you'll be looking at him like, damn. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he speaks really good English. That's, That's for sure. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's talk about... Um, the Detroit Pro. Okay. And what what's your thoughts on Fuad? Fuad seems to rub people the wrong way. He rubs me the wrong way. I'm, I've been very open about that, uh, and how he's dealing with athletes in his own company, hostile, and now uh, the Detroit Pro. And I'm sick. I'm thinking, this guy went out and promoted the shit out of this show. Right. After the Olympia, he was backstage. Hey man, I Detroit Pro. Detroit. 25,000 first prize, right? Increasing the prize money. I'm going to take care of you guys. Good hotel, everything nice. There's like four guys that are like not even well. I'm not going to diss the guys that are doing show. Great, do the show, but they're not big names. Let's just say that, that are doing right. the show. Good video popped in there. So that's a bigger name. Great. Right. Um, but to have four, four, the, 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 the open bodybuilding is going to come out on the Detroit Pro stage tomorrow and be four guys up there or five maybe i think four or five that's See, like what happened there this is what happens when you are a ex pro bodybuilder yeah businessman 
and you know how it is with different sponsorships and endorsements and for you to put stipulations on your athletes and it's kind of like a manipulation thing you know like we could just talk about how when nick walker was there numerous people's left because of the same accusations that's being said about sam you know yeah. not a him to do certain things because I watched who I, I um it's like it's like a cash cow for him. So if he can bleed juice out of a turnip, he will. And the athletes are seeing that, you know, because he's not coming off genuine that he really here for the sport and the business. Like Jay Cutler, he throws multiple competitions people come from all over the country to actually jump in an npc competition yeah. yeah you know that speaks volume and fuad has this this is my take on what I, I don't know him personally but just me being a spectator observing what's going on he come off as someone a bit of a suge's knight persona in bodybuilding yeah and it's kind of like either do as I say or don't do it or you don't. You yes. See? And and it shows now that you up the prize money. 10,000. So 10. So it's like 15,000. You just 10,000 first place. Yeah. 15. Okay. So he upped it 10 more. So now it's 25,000. 25,000. Yeah. And 10,000 second place. I think so. I think it's still, yeah. Yeah, so second place should be 10000 And that right there should let you know that nobody really want to support you, no matter how much money you want to yeah. throw out there. Because it's not about the money with us athletes. We do this because we love it. Yeah, exactly. We love, you know, this give us an outlet where we can go in the gym, feel them however we feel, and take all the frustration out on the weights and not have to worry about being judged. Uh, uh, ridiculed or anything and when we go on that stage we know that we are expecting to battle the judges but the promoter is jumping in front of the competition instead of letting the competition be in front of everything because me personally I would be more of a silent individual of the Detroit Pro because people are not doing this competition because of a manipulator is doing it now. Yes. And he thinks that his money can buy him people. It yep. can't. It, it don't didn't. control. And it it, it it don't work like that with bodybuilders. This is a sport where we give our all for free. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we 100%. love it. Yep. You know, so when you throw money in there, it's like, okay, it's cool, but I want that dope trophy. I want to go out there, display my physique on how hard I work. The money that comes, that's a perk. So by you throwing the money up higher, that's not what we attract it to. We're mm -hmm. not, we're not driven by a large amount of money. Because now we have the Arnold. Yeah. Even more money being thrown with the New Arnold. Pro, New K. York Pro. Dubai. Uh, 100 k uh, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. there's so many other options. And these promoters are not putting themselves in front of the competition. Mm -hmm. Because people feel like if Fuai don't like you, you might as well don't show up. John yeah. De La Rosa was supposed to do the competition and yep. pulled out. Pulled out. And could have potentially went there and won it easily. Yes. It's not about the money. No. That promoter is a manipulator. He's a manipulator and he's coming off as a user. He's coming you know? off like he's above people in the way he talks on the, when he's commentating, when he's talking about other athletes, the way he was talking about Samson Dowda, which I can ask you a little bit about. Uh, oh yeah. We're, Jesus, we're, man, I'm no. telling you. Okay. Uh, that's a whole nother, we're going to jump into that in a second, but yeah, he comes off with this kind of snubby kind of, High I don't horse. know. Yeah. And look at this. I just clicked on the Detroit Pro link and it's not found. Can you see this? Yeah. That's that's comforting. The day before the show, the people are trying to watch the live stream, trying to connect. Gets can't now. You just 
<laughs> thought this was going to be above and beyond the show, Fuad. Now your, your website's down. Should have just named this show the Fuad Pro. Exactly. You know, because then he could have said, people are not coming because it's me. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly why people are not doing it, because of you. You know, because he did so many distasteful things leading up to this competition where people was like, forget it. You're charging people $200, just come meet Sam for a box. And then Sam not there the whole time. He leaves and then you tell them, oh, um, I can't make them come back or F you. I watched the podcast. He straight said, I told him, I'll fuck you. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, do he not understand that we belong to the public? Yeah. We become public figures in the and our life is in the eyes of the public. We belong to the public. Yeah. And you cannot disrespect what puts you there. He's forgetting that the fans is who made him have the comfortable lifestyle that he's living. Yes. He didn't do that on his own. No one can. No. You know, and he on this high horse, on his pedestal, he's acting like a prima donna. This is just what I see. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I don't know him, but his character, I used to like this dude, has just been coming off so cocky, so arrogant, yeah. to where that ain't even remember when he was actually a competitor on stage big as shit looking really good yeah. all i see is short ball head guy yeah. manipulating all his athletes and having too much say so yes. in their personal life yes way too much say so way too involved he's way too involved with sam so like he's way too involved with samson dowda and mm -hmm. coming on his show and speaking on behalf of Samson and saying, w uh, with regards to Samson and Milos, he said, mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Samson's trying to take the high road and wants to be classy and not tell everything that happened between him and Milos. I'm like, if I was Samson watching, what the fuck? Why are you even mentioning this? That's my business that I told you that. I didn't want yep. you to go on your podcast and tell the world about it. Now they're all, then I made a video about it because I was like, that's news. What, like, come on, what's, what is this about now? Why are you opening up the door again? Yeah. So it's just like, he's, he's a supplement owner, a supplement company mm -hmm. who has sponsored athletes. And he's mm -hmm. like talking on their behalf and trying to dictate what they do and control the narrative for these athletes. When you just stay out, you stay out. Let the social media team, the marketing team do that stuff with the athletes. But he seems to want to have his fingers in all this stuff because he wants to control. You know, I mean, I, the money, that's where the money is. Exactly. And then he didn't have that type of power and control when he was the athlete. He couldn't no. be the voice and the face that people. So now he's getting these guys that have the attention and he's jumping in front of theirs yes. and kind of trying to remind them that, it's because of me that you're like, no, it's not. Sam had a million plus followers way before that. He should not have ever went over. I'm like. And one, to encourage this guy to keep eating like shit the way that he was, was a clear indication that he do not respect that kid. No, like, man. Chocolate milk and you, boxes you... of cereal. Like, I eat all type of wild stuff, but I'm not going to encourage no one to do this. And for him to encourage, and, oh, I'm going to try it. And then he got to be in all the videos. You know who he reminds me of? Puff Daddy. Oh, we don't want to go there. Puff Daddy. You know what's and going on with Puff Daddy right now, too. So. All the all his... Um, Should do a show on that. <laughs> all of his athletes leaving. All Puff Daddy stars leaving. No yeah. one's really eating, you know. And since we tapped on Samson, let's dive into it. Okay. Me personally, I feel that Samson only left Milos because Fua got in his head. Got in his head, and he had told Samson, you are the star. Milos works for you. You are the one. Yeah. No same thing. And for him to just put this speech out like he's Samson, um, uh, damage control, PR, and all of this was crazy to me because it's like, dude, you're supposed to be a owner of a business. Why are you in so much of the BS? Like, you got to have this attention. Now, all of a sudden, you want all the attention. 
You want all of the attention. You don't want no guys getting more attention than you. So you're charging 200 bucks for a box for people to meet this guy. And then they're waiting in long lines and don't even get to meet this guy. Yeah, I think with the Sam Solik, I think, or what happened there with the, the fees, I think that was the, the Arnold promoter that uh, wanted to do that to control the lines and stuff. I don't, I don't think it's actually Fouad doing that. I think that's part of the deal with having their type of thing. And they get a cut. But this is the thing. Why they never done that with Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Dorian? Like, there's so I, many. I, I, I think I agree. Okay, I agree with that. My rebut to that would be Sam Sulek is on a it's like a rich piano level where he just went viral and the whole world knows about this guy. And they're just coming there to the Arnold, Ohio to see Sam. They don't really know anybody else. They're just like they're obsessed with this kid that he looks there, you know, he's their age and he's able to do what this craziness with his physique. And that's kind of why the Arnold promoter. So Kind of but tapped in and said, "Oh, we see that. We see what's happening. Okay, let's take advantage. I'm not saying take advantage, but let's capitalize on it and you know use charge." Out of a yeah, yeah, they use out of a turn. I exactly. can see it that way. I can see it that way. So, yeah, I think yeah. Sam Sulik, if he's smart, uh, he's a great guy. He was at Dino's gym. D Dino's a, a close friend of mine, and uh, you know, I think Sam should probably venture off on his own, start his yeah. own supplement line, do do mm -hmm. the Bumstead thing. And yes. be off into the sunset because you're good, man. You're golden for the rest of your life. You don't yeah. need to be in hostile supplement. Like, what is that doing for you right now? Listen to the name, hostile. Yeah, you are a hostage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you eat what I give you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see how long he stays with hostile. I, I, I'm. He's young. Maybe he's just not in the right mind to be like, yeah, I'm out of here. Maybe he's trying to be respectful. I don't know. I, I really don't yeah. know why he would stay. He could make millions of dollars on his own, on his have own. the freedom to do, go on the shows he wants to go on yeah. and not be, I, well, it says, oh, I'm not controlling Sam. He can go on any podcast he wants to go on. I don't know if I believe yeah. it though. That was the manipulation part. Yeah. You know, cause you made it clear, obviously to Sam and quite a few others the folk is only on hostile business, no conflict of interest type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So Samson Dowda, what's your, your take on that? I know you, you made some videos. So guys, if you haven't already go check out some of the videos Mac truck made on Samson Dowda and Milos. like, what's your take on that whole split? I, I know more to it and I can't, I still can't say what I know about what happened between Milos and Samson Dowda talked to Milos about it. I talked to Milos the other day about, you know, coming on the show and discussing things, but he's like, no, I can't, I'm not talking about the whole Samson Dowda thing. Let's leave it at that. Um, what's your thoughts on how Samson handled that situation? Sam, like that was the biggest disrespect you could do to someone that put they all into you you know you fired this man through text message you didn't have enough uh, respect for him to actually have a face-to-face -face with him yeah and to go and give praises to everyone but me most was crazy and then to try to make it seem like Milos Milos did not coach you for those two shows Prague and uh forgot the other show Romania yeah Romania Pro was the ultimate slap in the face because if your wife was doing this and Milos was telling you with the giving you the protocol why you just didn't tell Milos up front but to have him thinking that He's giving his all, and you're actually listening because Milos go to bat for this guy. Yeah, he still, still, to, he still go to bat for him. Now maybe Samson' body was looking crazy because maybe him and his wife was playing around the whole time with the preps. Yeah. Because my opinion, yes, yeah, Samson came back a whole lot more conditioned, a lot smaller, mm -hmm. but that's still from Milos prep for the Ohio. You cannot, yes. 
take that away from this. Ten man. days of work with him and think I I did this. Yeah, no. it was the thing. You was at your best and you still couldn't beat Hardy. Yeah, mean that you don't have it figured out. No. Your wife don't have it figured out, and Milos took you from a no name individual and made you a household name. And he not only got um, ridiculed by so many other people, by him being a biased coach, it's because he truly felt like that was family to him. And for Samson to do what he did, I feel like Fuad was in Samson's head and in his wife's head. Because immediately after the Arnold, his wife stopped following Milos on social media. I, you, you I don't know if you heard the story about me and um, um, the new one. Like, like uh, she messaged me on Instagram and said, because I did a video about Samson and his um, conditioning, and he's not in, con he's not going to be conditioned enough to win the Arnold, and that he had some guy all showing through, and and that was old yeah. news. I, I didn't, I didn't break anything on that. And she's like, you, "How dare you talk about Samson like this? Who are you? You're nobody in this industry. You're just, what are you doing? You don't." I'm like. Okay, first, first of all, he's personally attacking me, right? And I'm just like, why are you talking on behalf of Samson and like being his overseer and coming in and like DMing people? Like you're right. so controlling over him. And, right. then, and then so Samson then blocked me, but she still followed me for a little bit. And then after he he lost, like I said he was going to do, she blocked me because she knew I was probably going to make a video of me like, I told you so, yeah. he was going to lose. Yeah, so... That, see that right there is a clear indication that Samson is easily influenced, yeah. and they manipulating this guy from both angles. Yes, and the best thing a manipulator could do is take your support system away from you to where you only depend on him. The way Samson did Milos, there's not a coach on the face of this earth that's going to ever take him serious. I ever. Wouldn't, I wouldn't risk my my coaching portfolio and record That's, on it, him. Oh, for Milos, you know, and you can tell that. See, Milos, he's a man's man. Yes, he's what opinions. He's always honest. Yeah. If there was anything close to putting Samson in a freaking hospital, he would have been the first person at, next to that bedside. Yeah, or right there, you know. And all of a sudden, you think Hottie's not going to show up. You got all this energy. Yeah. The following day, you got all this energy. Yeah, you're perfect again. The energy is leaving, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, the, the day, so what was it? Uh, so he came out and he said, you know, my health is failing me. I, my body's failing me. And yeah. and then, you know, the next day, we don't know if Hottie's going to make it. So he's like, oh, guys, I'm good. I'm in the show. No, I'm in the show. What are you talking about? I'm good. It's like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? Like, this is. Don't believe what you hear. You told yeah. us. Yes. It was clear what he was doing. And it was just like, dude, I don't know. I mean, I, I, liked, I liked Samson prior to all this. And he's a yeah. great bodybuilder. I always said he can be the multi-time Mr. Olympia. But now seeing his mental state and how he's handling himself, maybe he can recover from this and he can kill it this year at the Olympia. I hope he does. And I don't see. But I don't know, man. Mentally, I think this is this pushed him to the edge. And then what his wife was, is doing. He was ready to quit. He was. Because of Hottie. And we know it was because of Hottie. He was ready to quit. His health failed him so bad. He yeah. did things that he regret. What did Milos do to you that you regret? We already know you use insulin. Yeah. A lot of us do. So what did you do? Some what? More diuretics than normal? Like, really? Like, you didn't do anything that you regret. What you did that you re regret, but you too coward to say is you fired your fucking friend that you was calling family yes. through message. That's something you do in high school to a chick. Yeah. Being a grown man, being a grown man, you're not supposed to do no other man like that. No, you know? And, and I said, maybe it's his culture. No, it's not. A man is a man, regardless what background we walk. Respect is everything. And he showed that he never truly respect Milos. No. Because, and then not texting him for 10 days or whatever. Yeah. 
And then we're family, we're friends after this still? Like what? Reach out to um reached out to Milos. No. So he waited like eleven to thirteen days just to make a video. And the video still didn't address the situation. Yeah. You know. And he worried about people's talking about people's was attacking his wife through this and that. Dude, knock it off. Then all of a sudden, the next day when he feel good, all the love that me and my wife is getting. So the hate just stopped like this because I don't know how to make the hate stop like this. Yeah. How did you put like exactly? Take, I'm going to the hospital. My health is failing for the hate to stop. Like, and then it was like, oh, I just had the flu and I I just had to get some antibiotics at the doc. Okay, didn't did you? Then tell say that. I say hey, you guys have the flu. I'm feeling really down. My body's failing me because of the flu, not because of Milos. And then not, not be, that's why I'm not leaving Milos in the middle of the Arnold, Ohio, the day after, and coming out like, dude, what the fuck is going on with you? But listen, if we go back to the night of the finals when it was over, I was so energetic. Him and Heidi, respectful to each other, hugging and all of this. We didn't see no signs of help failing down and all of this the down hit you the moment you got in that hotel without that trophy and just uh war but this is the thing coming second to hottie is a blessing it is man deal you see yeah. what i'm saying because it wasn't like um you came second to uh uh keon pearson yeah you know our shit me <laughs> yeah, this is the Mr. Olympia. You came right? second, Mr. Olympia, Mr. Condition, Mr. Dense Muscle, Mr. Outpose your bite. He's just flat out just polished so well. So he should have had his head up extremely high, yeah. thinking the shit close. Because he was good enough to still come in second. You know, because to be honest. That guy, dang, um, uh, damn, his name on the tip of my tongue. Which, uh, one? the Arnold, he came in six when he, um, the night before they had him in, the, um, oh, third. Akeem, Akeem, Akeem Will, yeah, Akeem, Samson need to watch out for Akeem. Oh, yes, he needs to watch out for Akeem. I think he needs to watch out for Brandeo too, because Brandeo is as tall as him almost, and the structure is there. Yeah, he bring him, come and shred it. He could push. I said he's pushing Samson already. So, well, he pushed the shit out of him at that yeah. competition. Yeah, he, he pushed the shit out of him. So it wasn't a cakewalk. He pushed, he pushed Samson so hard, you know, to where that it really was just a battle between them two because Hottie was like so ahead of yeah. them. Yeah, you know, and Hadi, I'm glad Hadi did these two shows back to back because after that loss, it showed unsportsmanlike, whatever it was that he the emotions he was feeling, it put him in a, a negative light. And yeah. by him, these two, he redeemed himself big time to the utmost. You know, he showed this was like the first time I ever seen him so happy yeah. doing competitions. You know, and, and it did really well for him. Samson needed to take some pages out of his book, and he needed to start off by popping up at Milos in Vegas. And I'm not the type to say beg for forgiveness, but mm -hmm. how you did close, you need to beg for forgiveness. He does. Because you, man's character in his brand, because you made it seem like he did something to mess up your health. Yeah. That's the and you can do in this business with a coach is say, yo, health is failing. I was working with this coach right here. Yeah. You know, I, me and my wife tried something different from what he told us. It was us. better and we did better, looked better. Just yeah. digging him again. Like, then why the fuck is he your coach? If you're going to hype up your wife and say, oh, she she made me look better than when I was with this guy. Yeah. That's so that's, you're not talking to your friend. I wouldn't talk to my coach. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that out there. Our coach, you know. Yeah. That's pretty much the only person that could probably coach him and mm -hmm. not feel like he had backstabbed him because yeah. he's working the strings on the puppet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So one last thing with the Samson thing. Uh, Fuad came up with a video and said, Milos owes Samson for what 
he did for him. Wow. Because, you know, Samson chose, chose uh, Milos as his coach. And when they did good together, that rose Milos's stock as a coach. And, and it's good for him. He, he got, you know, Arnold Classic win under his belt with, with Samson. I'm like, this is Fuad, again, talking on behalf of the athlete, saying Milos owe, like, owes Samson something now. How do you figure Milos wasn't already that guy before Samson? Because to be honest, the only reason why I liked Samson was because of Milos. Yeah. Not because of Samson. And I'm quite sure there's a lot of people just like me that would have never gave him the opportunity if he wasn't with Milos. Yeah. Milos owed him an ass whooping. That's what he owed him. Mm -hmm. So, because it takes two. It does. You, you see what I'm saying? It, it's not only um, a one-man show. It's no different from when I turned pro. Me and Psycho Lewis worked together after the Gold's Gym issue and uh, Dexter stopped working with him, then Sean Rowe, and like, you know, and then I was already in a dark. Both of us was in a in a bad place. I wasn't competing for two years. We had 12 weeks to take me from nothing to something. Yeah. We did that. And there's no way in hell I could say that I did that for him. Or he can say he did this for me. We did that together. Mm -hmm. you see? And I will always uh, have the utmost respect for Psycho for the simple fact that we both dug each other's out of the trenches. Yeah. We both were so negatively looked at in the fitness community. And we made something happen within 12 weeks, you know, and it was amazing. I went from like 201 all the way up to competing at what I was like 230 something. Then wow. I dropped at a drop down to the high 225s and wow. all it's all in 12 weeks, trying to get the drugs back working in my body and yeah. everything. And when I say this man, I was doing two a days, and if I got to go film and I missed the daytime, we mean back up at night. It wasn't a time or day that he was not available for me. He bought his house right around the corner from my house. So we were always doing everything. The only thing we didn't do together was eat together because he gave me my program. I follow it. I, I, I listen. I train. I'm self-driven, so he never had to ride me. You know, you yeah. tell me to do something, I'm just going to do it. And we made it work. And there's no way this would be possible off of just me. No. You see what I'm saying? Samson did not become Samson Dauda off of Samson Dauda. No. You became Samson Dauda with the help of Milos. Don't get the secret formula now and think you got it all figured out. Yeah. Because there's still things that Milos have not taught you. You think just because you know the protocol with insulin that that's it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's way more to it. You see what I'm saying? And Milos have hitters under his belt. Yes. He have guys, if they was to be able to come to America, they would do damage. There you go. He know how to get a person conditioned. Yep. Sam can just have no, higher... He's not listening to everything. Me even said, I told him to do more cardio. He didn't do it. He didn't. I told him to eat fish. He doesn't like fish. He didn't do it. Dude, how you don't, the, the main things that could potentially get that thick skin thinner, yeah. more cardio, more white fish. You yeah. don't want to do no fish. You don't eat doing chicken. No, and I, don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't want to eat it. I'm Sam. I don't want to eat that stuff. I don't and prefer it. He became bigger than a program. Yeah. And he gonna fall on his face at this Olympia. I give him six or seven place this Olympia. It could, it could, that could definitely happen, man. Nick Walker's back, coming in. Back there. We go back and forth behind Samson. Yeah, you were like, yeah, but it's loose. I'm like, yeah, but he ain't got enough ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. So it's yeah. like we're both honest with each other's. Yeah. And I see seven to six. He need to watch out for Hunter Lebron. Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack. Um, even Tonio, if Tonio's fucking peeled, I like Tonio. So it's like you got rid of the source, 
Now you have to find somebody to learn your body. Yes. Because there's not too many coaches going to be willing to listen to somebody else, like his wife input. Yeah. You know? I think there may be some coaches out there that may be like, okay, I'll do it. I'm going to get some clout to work with yeah. Samson and I'll take it. Um, so I'm, sh I'm sure he'll find a coach. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to work. Any of you guys that are watching this, that are the coaches that are the top coaches right now, watch your back, man. Like, watch. I know, I know stuff about what happened between Samson and Milos. If that happens to you, you're not going to be a happy camper. You're not going to be. I don't know how Milos does it after what transpired. I don't know how he's still doing what he's doing. He's just got that respect that he doesn't want to get into it and just put it behind yeah. him. But it's not cool what happened and. um, if people knew, they'd be like, holy shit. Yeah. Milos is just a gentleman, dude. He's a gentleman, yeah. Gentleman, you know, and yeah. he willing to take the backlash to say somebody else, you know, because if the truth come out, Samson career probably be over. Yeah. Because he clearly can't take the heat. Yeah. He not take the heat. Derek's gonna tear that ass up. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Potty, you gotta Derek, Nick. Curry. If Brandon Brand get deep lines in those legs yeah. and don't play the size game, Samson needed to – like, Samson has everything. He does. He even brought that back up that I didn't think was possible. Yeah. You know? um, And clearly he's not eating fish and doing cardio, and I'm, I don't think he's training glutes. Because how someone that big besides big him and Chris don't have glutes. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I was looking, I'm like, damn. <laughs> Remember I hit you, I said, well, damn, he ain't got no no, no meat. <laughs> no, there's no meat back there. And it's like, you got huge quads. You got huge quads. So you should have dense glutes from yeah. training your quads to get that big, but he doesn't have it there yet. Um, so. Glutes, hamstrings. Because his hamstrings have detail, but it's hard to see it when you don't have the glutes to tie in with them. Yes. And I started looking at it. The more you would talk of the, and touch on it, I started looking at it more and more. I said, I be damned. I said, yeah. it's hard to see the hamstrings when it's nothing but. Uh, um, it just blends a in. Ass. Yeah. It's a flat ass. So no tie in there. Right. No. Uh, no. So, no, but... yeah, man, like uh, the whole Samson Dauda, Milos thing, and Fuad thing. I think the way Fuad has acted is very unprofessional to say an athlete owes a coach, especially Milos, who's a legend, a veteran in the sport. He's got yeah. 1.5 million followers on Instagram. The Samson's 600 or something. Like Milos doesn't owe Samson nothing. They didn't need Samson to get to where he is today. It's funny. At all. At all. And I'm quite sure Milos wasn't probably even charging him much of anything. No, no. And, and the fact half was given him, yeah. And staying up late at night overnight to because he's overseas and he had to do like he's invested so much into the athletes and he gets yeah. slapped in the face like that and disrespected is like that's that's Samson, that's your character, that's who you that's yeah. who you are, I guess. For now, he's a great guy, yeah. But if we look at character, mm -hmm. he's a trash bag, yeah. I would, I, 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 I agree with that, I agree with that statement that what you showed us Samson Dauda and I know you're going to watch this I know you're going to see this I know your wife's going to see this your character showed a lot and even in the comments people are like I used to be a fan of Samson but now seeing this seeing what he did during that weekend at the Arnold Ohio man I can't I'm not a fan anymore I'm not a fan he lost a lot of fans yeah he, he disrespected his fans and yeah. you can't do that man you got to cherish your that's how you you are where you are because of the fans they support you right, right. so <laughs> We'll see what happens to Samson Dad. I'll see what he does on the Olympia stage. If he makes it there, we'll see. Hopefully he does. I, I still want to see how he does, but mentally, I don't like you said, I don't think uh I can't root for him anymore. I, I can't root why? for him based off of his character. Yeah. You know, because I'm too transparent to look past the level of disrespect publicly that he gave someone. Yeah. And he owed us fans. Yeah. Uh, explanation and he chose to take I guess you call it the high road no you chose to actually disrespect us as well yeah to try to paint a picture of Milos 
being this mad scientist that's trying to blow your organs out, you know, and alone, I like I was die hard yep. for him competing every show, even when I felt like he was going to get drugged through the mud that I still had my money on him. Yeah. But that character that he carries speaks who he's really, who he is outside of that stage. And that's like a person that's good in public, but goes home beating the shit out of his kids and wife. Yes. You know, I can't get behind that and support that. And yeah. karma yeah. is good and bad. And he has a lot of bad karma coming. No, I was I was gonna say that too when you were talking to her. I was like, this is bad karma for him, man. Like, this is start yeah. what you did. Like the universe doesn't forget what you just did to Milos. Oh, no. can't no. get away with it, man. I'm sorry. It's gonna catch up. Yeah. So yeah. uh okay, we're gonna wrap it up here pretty quick here. I just want your quick take on the New York Pro. O'Neill's pretty confident he's gonna beat Nick Walker. What do you think? Can he beat Nick Walker? Oh man, let me tell you. Tony on and Nick Walker, man, I love both those. Guys. Yes, man, they're both great, awesome guys. Man. So it's like it's it's just what you, what are you going for? Uh, I'm I'm looking to see beautiful lines. I'm on looking to see a ton of muscle. Yeah. With these two, I can't say that. I'm looking to see a freaking battle. And may the best man wins when it comes to this. Now, just. Off of it, I think with the fire that Tonio has now, he's going to bring an even better version of what we just seen this past weekend. And with Nick Walker not being able to make the Olympia, he's been shoveling coal into that fire for so long to where that this is not going to be a cakewalk for either of them. I think Tonio is going to really – um make this a fun competition for Nick. Now, yeah. Nick should beat Tonio just off of all of the all of the real estate that he has over Tonio. Mm -hmm. He should beat him. But Nick cannot slip up with Tonio because Tonio is a dangerous man. Yeah. And he slipped up with Samson. Yes. And Samson beat him. Samson didn't beat a Nick Walker at his best. No. He beat a Nick Walker um, trying to play super condition. Yeah. Instead of keeping that size with the super condition. Now, I know Nick is not going to do that no more. So, Tonio, he got to he gotta be prepared to battle. And this one is going to be a really good competition. I think this is going to be one of our favorite competitions of mm -hmm. all year besides the Arnold because these are actually two guys that have respect for each other's two guys that's been busting each other balls publicly in a respectful manner. Yeah. And two guys that still have an open line of communication. Yep. So Nick Walker, if he come on stage as Nick Walker, oh he's he's just gonna come grab the trophy and go home. Yeah. So right here, looking at this picture, I don't know if he did legs that day. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, inflammation from the, the blood still being in the quads, but okay. he's not showing the Nick Walker quads that we normally see when he is close out. He's six weeks out, yeah. Yeah. And normally when Nick Walker's six weeks out, he already stays ready. That's true. He's usually really, you know? really lean. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe he did legs that day. And then Antonio, he just has this – cartoon character shape yeah that's gonna have the eyes drawn to him yeah he's the underdog even though he won that he's still clearly the underdog in his competition and everybody loves a, 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 a underdog story now <laughs> if nick don't win this one oh man i don't know what this what that says for the Olympia. Yeah. Well, I, I think they could go do any other show and, and win it. I, I just think, I think he's probably going to win this show. I think he's so motivated after tearing a hamstring and mm -hmm. he's going to come, he's going to dial it in and uh, be so huge on that stage beside, <clears throat> beside 
Tonio, give a 30 pound, 35 pound muscle difference and they're the same height. See, see, Raphael's taller than Tonio, but Nick's the same height as Tonio. So you're really going to see, okay, how, how much thicker from the side chest and the side tricep that that Nick that is. Side, that side profile yeah. in the rear of Nick is going to walk away from so many people. Antonio, um, that's what I'm saying. If Nick Walker get on that stage as Nick Walker, the mutant, yeah, we already know that he's just coming to pick the trophy in a checkup. That's what now, I, I I want to see Nick Walker the mutant. Yeah, big and full, conditioned. Yes. yes. I did I do kind of knock him. I still think you know his waist still needs in some angles, like it's a little thick and dense. He's got such huge abdominal wall. Um yeah. that I we're gonna see how it looks standing next to tiny Tonio's waist and some other guys that are doing a show. But uh, yeah, the side profile, you can't, this is huge. It's just overwhelming. That's like scary. Now, Antonio going to expose him front double. Yes. He's going to expose him front double. Front double, front lat? Yeah, He's front lat, him? front double. He's going to expose Nick Walker. Uh, but the rear, for some reason, Nick x range is just so amazing with that rear double and rear lat spread because it just... It just, I don't know. The, the legs don't look as short from the rear how they do when he's faced yeah, off. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He looks better when he hits his back poses. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then his side, no mm -hmm. one is going to stand next to him with that side. Yeah, see, like the rear, <laughs> this guy have muscles all the way down to the mm -hmm. upper glutes. Yeah. You know, and he looks like if he looked like this in the front, the legs is perfect. But from the rear, is his legs and shit is perfect. From the sides, that's yeah, that's unmatched. Yeah. He's just so wide from head to the toe, and his conditioning is just crazy. Now, this most muscular, he's gonna get that. He's gonna win that easily. Yeah, because okay. he can hide that waist, and when he crunched down, the legs don't look as short as they really are frontwards because he's crunching down on them. Yeah. It's just that front double Ooh, and that front a, lat. Yeah. He stretches out so, so long gated to where that the legs look shorter and the waist look wider. Yes. And San Antonio, Tonio is going to expose that. And so I expect Tonio to win front double, front lat spread. Um, I yeah. also expect him to win abdominals and thighs. Um, Tonio have a good most muscular. That's like a toss up, but the side chest, side tricep, Nick Walker has that. Mm -hmm. Rear double, Nick Walker's has that. Now rear lat spread. That's going to be a toss up because Tonio have a really strong rear lat spread. Yeah, like if you go back to Tonio rear lat spread, it's like oh yeah, it's 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 flawless, you know. So between the two with that rear latch spread, that one's going to be a toss-up. Look yeah. at that. That right there is Dexter. Perfect. Yeah. That's De Jackson. And Nick Walker is not going to beat a Dexter Jackson rear latch. No. So I think, I think I think Antonio can push him on the back double. I mean, Antonio's back double is deadly, and I just think you're going to see him. The symmetry yeah. of tight waist, the turtle shell, popping muscle. He can push him on it, but the thing is, Nick Walker lower half is so dominant though. True. Also in that rear in that rear double. The hamstrings are way thicker on, on Nick. That inner thigh, you can still see it from the rear in yeah. those boots, the yeah. way it ties in. It's so dominant from the bottom half alone without even looking at the upper and looking at Tonio, but like with the latch spread on Nick Walker, Tonio's is deadly. Now, with the rear double with Tonio and Nick's, Nick is going to get that edge because that Lord just has so much density because Tonio has it, but Nick just has so much thickness from that hamstring and that inner thigh. The yeah. inner thigh just bring even more of a 3D look of those legs for Nick Walker yeah. from the, you know, let's see. Um, it's look at that. Weird. That thickness is just even he even how sweeps 
and his legs from yeah. the rear, but we don't see yeah. him from the front. In there, yeah, you can see him here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it's just so much. He got equity in that, but <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it, it's <clears throat> but Nick biceps is so he's crazy. huge where that it's like it's connected to that forearms where it's not really highlighting that peak like it should, like it does on Tony. That's why I say true. Yeah. I don't know. It's, they might give they might give the front double to Nick because his arms are just so huge. Yeah, they're gonna be close. So, yeah. It depends on if he's crunching down and don't highlight the short legs. Cause if he's elongated, his legs are so short to where that Tonio could still slide up in there. Because yeah. Tonio has a lot of muscle. He has a lot of muscle on that small frame. Yeah. So much muscle. And if Tonio could come in there at 225, close to 230 with that conditioning, oh my God. Yeah. He has six weeks to do it. Well, and I think he'll do it. Yeah, man. I, 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 I'm with you. It's going to be a battle. Probably one of the best shows of the year at the New York Pro. We got the Pittsburgh Pro coming up, the guest posing. We're going to see Big Ramy there. We see Andrew Jack there. Yeah. Um, Nick Walker is going to be there. It's going to be, that's going to be kind of cool to see. Pittsburgh Pro. Nick stepping out. Yeah. <laughs> stepping out. Yeah. Now, Ramy, I don't know if he's going to be able to repair those quads. Too. And that back, yeah. once that back have atrophy, is impossible to get Tri that back. But, you know, like, and then a triceps, yeah. like, he has so much going against him that I don't think stem cells can repair it can repair you to look good on the beach, but yeah, competition is so your body fat's low. Now, yeah, I, like after the Pittsburgh, we gonna know if he's gonna be a, if he show up. Yeah, and if he show up, we gonna know if he's gonna be able to still do it. Yeah, and me personally, I just bow out gracefully. He has nothing else to prove. He became. Such yes. one of the most lovable bodybuilders, humble, yeah. you know. He has nothing to gain from this, you no, know. I don't think. I, I think strategy wise, does does he think he can come back and win the Mister Olympia and and do an Arnold and win the Arnold? Maybe Start like an Arnold Brazil or something. Maybe something like an Arnold UK <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. But like not, yeah. And he definitely can't pull a Jake Cutler. No. No, I don't think he's he because he can't beat Hottie. He no, can't... that's done. That's over. Just Hottie's on another level now. He's improved so he much. That... I, you know, and can he beat a Samson? Yeah, he have so many times, but yeah. a Hottie, he can't beat a Hottie, and he's not going to beat Derek because Derek is on fire. He's on fire. He's. I'm, I'm becoming a fan of Derek. I just want to see what he can do to improve his conditioning from the front. And if he does yeah. that, I'd be like, okay, you did it. You, you... Here, like yeah. up in here. Like, yeah. It's just, how do you be so hard from the side in the rear? Yeah. But right here is just soft, you know. Um, it's just so many he's not going to beat. And he's not going to beat a Nick Walker. So... Well, I, I think, think I think I think Derek's going to win the Olympia. I'm not going to say it now, but I'm going to wait and see. But I haven't made predictions yet. But I think he's going to win based off the trajectory, the trajectory that the judges are putting him in, and what they what they do in the breakdown of his physique over Hottie yeah. and why he beat Hottie. Um, yeah. I don't think Nick Walker has the, the symmetry and the structure and the tiny waist to to beat it's Derek Lunsford. No, not I a get, good Derek. No, he can't beat Derek at his best. No. Uh, in order for Nick, see, I'll try to tell people that Nick Walker is the mass monster of a Dexter Jackson version. If someone come off, Dexter going to get him. Yes. You know, because he's always on. Yeah. But he's not on enough with enough muscle to just completely continue walking, walking away with it. Yeah. Which Nick Walker is the type he's always on. I have not ever seen him not on. No. Even when Austin Samson. When he's flatter. Now, yeah. He was just, he's flatter. But yeah. however, do I think Samson walked away um, from Nick at that competition just easily? Not at all. No. 
Nick Walker beat himself by not filling out like how he was supposed to. Yeah. And that's the only time we've seen Nick Walker off. So whoever not on all the way, Nick gonna get you. They have, he's the he... fires of bodybuilding. <laughs> he's he's creeping and yeah. he's always gonna be right there for whoever is off. Yes. So if body comes like he did last year, Nick gonna get him. Definitely. I definitely think Nick could maybe, maybe take out Hottie. I don't know. I, I this Hottie's such a freak. I don't know. I don't have the conditioning that he had last year. The yeah. wide weight. Um, yes. Not as hard as he, you know, normally is. He can beat he that Hottie. Yeah. Yeah. He can beat a Hottie that we just seen in Ohio. No. no. Cause, Cause even Derek will have a hard time with that. Yeah. One, yeah. You know, well, and I asked I asked Nick that. I asked Nick, I said, do you think Hottie would have beat you if he came with the way he did at Arnold? And he's like, yeah. 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 He would beat yeah. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's and it's crazy. That, that was a 212. He was like, what, maybe 235, 240 tops? 240s, yeah. He's definitely in the 240s. High right. 240s. It, yeah. like, it looked at every bit of 270. Yes, it did. Next to it Samson. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And then he learned how to vacuum good enough to where he brought that weight. The vacuum, in. man. He's pulling it so hard in, like a damn. Like this guy came in and from last year's Olympia, he's like, I am I'm coming to show these guys. I'm serious. This is yeah. what I love. And he you could see it in him. Every pose was per sharp. He was just the it was awesome is, to see. I, I and him and Derek, it's gonna be a Derek and Hottie Olympia. Yeah. And then now. We already know that's this deal. Yeah. Um, from that on down is Nick and whoever else. Yeah, but not for to be Samson over Nick. No, that's I, not I, I, yeah. no, I have Nick ahead of Samson based off of what yeah. I've seen from Samson. No, he's not going to yeah. learn how to get those glutes in. in this, he hasn't. We just see his best. His best. That is why brought in his best still. Wasn't close to Hottie on the no. judging sheet and on our eyes looking at it. So no. Nick is about to be on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man, this is about to be exciting. It's going to be a good season. Yeah, back fun. It's going to be good, man. And we're going to we're going to be covering it. I'll come on your show. You want to do your show? You always come on mine. I'll come on your show, man, and we'll kick it up and, and do some shit on there. Yeah, man, we definitely got to do something, dude. Yeah, we definitely do something. Even if I come out where you are and we just get some some training yes. or get something going on, some shit talking, some training, yes. grab food, some yep. shit like that. Dude, it's it's about to, it's about to be bad. It's about to be fun, dude. It's gonna be a really crazy season, man. I think it's gonna be one of the craziest years that we've seen in a while, especially with Samson kicking it off for us. And with all that drama and now the beef's going on, man, it's it's heating up. Yo. It's good. We need you need some some shit happening here. It gets kind of boring in bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. We got Samson Bush shit. We got yeah. Rafael and Tonio. Like yeah. it's it's, it's Nick. getting exciting. Yeah. WWE. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Just wait for uh blessing to get back in the game because he talks a lot of shit and I want to see him get back in the game too. So yeah. yeah. He's good for the um he's good for the hype. Yeah. But just having one leg is not going to ever. No, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm just not a it's true. It, he, no, he's the legs. You, we know the legs is holding him back, man. Like he's got to yeah. figure something out there. Yeah, you only go yeah. so far. But uh, yeah, all right, brother, man, I really appreciate it. Good. This is a long uh, uh, interview, but man, it's it was full. It was full to the yeah. brim on this one. So it's going to be a good one get this out there and appreciate you coming on man respect you in this industry and it's man, a, like a, thank you and grateful to have you on the show yeah okay so just hit me up i'm always available for you my brother i will man all right appreciate it catch okay. you on the next one okay peace, peace.